Hello and welcome to another episode of Crypto Time. My name's James Coughlin and I'm joined today with my usual co-host, Antonio Schillingford. How are you today, mate? I'm doing rather fine. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm good. So as always, people, we are going to be following the same format. It's going to be two prominent bits of news that have been cropping up over the last week or so, and that's going to include BitBoss and what they've been doing on top of Tokenize with BSV, and you're going to be covering what exactly? So I'm going to be talking a little bit about Silk Road and how that really did start to break apart, um, but not just that, some more recent events that have now cropped up. Is that going to be anything to do with counterfeiting by any chance? Uh, possibly. So without further ado, let's find out exactly what we are talking about. So BitBoss and introducing the first casino tokens running on top of tokenized protocol for gaming applications. Now, as we know, um, it's been no kind of uh, secret that Calvin Air is massively into the gaming sector and has been for quite some time. He has been doing some really cool stuff in that sector for a long time as well, and he's made a lot of money out of it. So what we have seen is BSV have talked a lot around the gambling industry and how they can clean up certain parts of it and how actually the blockchain will benefit and actually help make that system a lot clearer. So let's talk about exactly who BitBoss are and what they're going to be achieving. So BitBoss created um, blockchain solutions for real money gambling solutions. BitBoss introduces the first casino tokens running on the tokenized protocol for gaming applications. BitBoss is building real gaming solutions leveraging off the power of Bitcoin SV blockchain and the tokenized protocol. So this is really cool stuff. I think what needs to be addressed here is what exactly BitBoss are doing and why they need to utilize tokenized. Well, BitBoss itself are obviously a standalone company which are uh, creating uh, gambling-like utilities on top of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. One thing that is very real in the gambling sector is they like to keep their funds within their own ecosystem. So what they're not looking to do particularly is be in a situation where they can just use multiple different currencies and then you can trade off and use different entities. What they are allowing is for you to use BSV as a token um, to actually use on their gambling utilities. And also they'll have a coin which is specific to the actual gambling utility, which is built on top. That's quite interesting. I'm sure you'd agree. Yeah, 100%. And when it comes to gambling, um, my personal opinion here is I always have the saying house always wins. Yep. And I never really trust the systems that they put in place, especially when you come to using the, the virtual machines. Mm -hmm. The tables, not too bad. But when you come to using the virtual machines, I just don't trust them at all. So the fact that they could potentially be built on top of a blockchain where you can actually test its integrity, um, I think that's going to open up a completely new space. Yeah, I agree. And I think one thing that people have been very concerned about for years now is using virtual, for example, roulette, um, poker, anything of that kind of level. Um, if you, for example, look at it on that kind of linear level and you look at mm -hmm. what exactly they're doing, what the issue that I have is when, for example, they're running a model and you hit bet on that, say, roulette um, game that you're playing on, in essence, what's happening is there could be an algorithm that's running in the background, which basically just makes it more profitable for the company at any one point. So when you hit bet, uh, simultaneously, um, hundreds of other individuals in different betting shops could be doing the same or online. Um, and what, in essence, I think could be a possibility and something that's been rumored out there for a long time is that there's an algorithm running in the background, which will then push it to be more profitable always for the house. Now, of course, it's not possible to, you know, manipulate it to absolutely every degree, but it is possible to push it in the house's favor. And I think one thing that was interesting, I was talking with a friend who's very into that kind of sector, um, and he was saying about roulette, and he was saying that roulette, if it didn't have the zero, would be a much more fairer mm -hmm. game. And I think it's interesting to see what, for example, gambling entities do to obviously put it in their favor. Now, one thing we have to be real to is that this is still going to be a company built on top of it. And the reason why companies are there is to make profit. It's not there to be a charity. Yeah. It's not there to pass the funds on to someone else. So the zero off the roulette machine will not disappear. It's still going to be the same game. All it's going to do is prove to you via the blockchain that what is happening is actually happening. And yeah. you can see that happening properly. Now, what BitBoss have done is they've applied for a patent and this patent is currently pending. And what they're looking to do with this patent is ensure that actually fair gaming is done. So the way that this is going to happen is using um, smart contracts in some sort of capacity to ensure that each party is paid out where they're supposed to. So in essence, when you click that bet button, there's always going to be someone on the other end of it and you're going to be set into a smart contract with that individual or that company. And then everything is going to get set out nicely yeah. on the back end. So I think it's going to be real improvement 
improvement to what we are actually seeing today. Um, even if it's just on a view that you could actually just check that what's happened is fair. You may still lose because I think that's a very uh, yeah. you know, real scenario. But at the same time, you can prove that what yeah. you're losing is real and legitimate. At least I can go there and actually prove that I lost properly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so make you feel even better about your loss. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> exactly that. So what else are they saying? So they have had a Bitcoin SV mobile currency wallet that has their Baccarat and also lottery games embedded into it. They know that the mobile wallet is about to become a epicenter for every player's mobile experience. So in essence, what's going to happen is you could have a desktop wallet that's sitting there. So I think that's an interesting way of looking at it. BitBoss mobile games can run using BSV or a custom token. As I just mentioned, that's one of the statements that they've made. Uh, BitBoss will be incorporating uh, provably fair functionality into their mobile games using patent pending technology. As bets are sent to the Bitcoin SV blockchain, a BitBoss uh, designed smart, smart contract processes the bet and places both the bet results and payout transactions back onto the blockchain. That is perfect. That is really what we need to be seeing. So I think yeah. that really gives people a good insight as to what exactly is supposed to be happening here and how they're actually going to be operating going forward. And I think now is a nice transition into your subject and what has been happening in terms of the nefarious things out there. Yeah. So on this show, we talk a lot about some of the agendas at play, um, why this coin was created, the purpose behind it all the time. Yep. Um, it's just because we like to look at it in a much deeper way and actually understand the purposes behind exactly the technology that is being created in the first place. Sure. So what's the purpose of technologies like Zcash? What's the purpose of technologies like Monero? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of something called SegWit? Yeah, and then it leads on to the Lightning Network. Now, with all of these different technologies, you're talking about doing completely anonymous transactions where no one can really and truly figure out um, what you've done. Sure. Yeah. Now, something that the crypto community is very much aware of is something called Silk Road. Now, in 2011, um, a guy called Ross Albrick, um, he's the person that actually created Silk Road. What Silk Road was, it was pretty much just a dark web marketplace yeah, built into effectively Tor. So that now, was people being able to buy drugs and various weapons, loads of different things that were yeah. out there, right? So very much the narrative you see when in the very early days when we had that spike and it went to uh, I think one thousand two hundred dollars around that mm -hmm. around that mark and it clips gold for pretty much the first time. Yep. Around there, the narrative around what Bitcoin was really used for was centered around drugs, guns, and everything else that you shouldn't really be purchasing mm -hmm. or using. Yeah. Now. That narrative was, to be honest with you, pretty spot on because that was one of the first use cases of Bitcoin. But Bitcoin back then, it was the true version of Bitcoin, effectively now what we call BSV. So it actually used to record all of the history of transactions that have ever been done. So for a person to be using that and trying to apply it to the dark web, it doesn't really make too much sense. It's the worst thing that you can possibly use. I think what's interesting and to liken it to at the moment uh, is just to put out there that, yes, of course, there was a lot of people using it for nefarious purchases. Um, and that was one of the things that sparked interest in it in the first place. But it didn't mean, obviously, that everybody was doing that at the time. Yeah. Uh, stupid analogy around that is like the white van. Uh, the white van could be used to mm -hmm. fit your new sky dish or your new yeah. um, you know, kitchen or sink or whatever yeah. it may be that you're having done. But it also could be used to rob a bank, right? Yeah. Um, so it doesn't always mean that they're bad things. But I think the first point was is that really created a lot of interest in it put it in the news and media it it made people understand a bit more about crypto i think yeah and really and truly it, it was one of its first use cases yep. which is sad to say because of, obviously bitcoin is there and designed to do the complete opposite uh -huh. now just to give you some figures behind it the fbi seized thirty thousand btc from silk road um their bitcoin holdings and an additional one hundred and forty four thousand btc from albrook's private holdings and they actually seized that three weeks later after they'd done the initial 30,000 BTC. Mm -hmm. Now, he got sentenced to prison and the sentence that he got was insane just because of the stuff that he was actually tied into mm -hmm. really and truly, even though he can't actually physically get more time, they should have just given it to him in general. Mm -hmm. um, so when the FBI actually shut down Silk Road in late 2014, the crackdown resulted in more than 17 convictions i won't go into what the actual convictions are um just because it is very negative mm -hmm. but if you do want to do it very easy just hit google and then you'll have the breakdown of what those convictions really were mm -hmm. 
So Silk Road came crumbling down because the FBI, but not just the FBI, Europol. So you had different countries, different organizations working together to take down this particular organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Something that the crypto community doesn't believe can actually happen again. But yet we've seen it on countless occasions. And this is the thing is that we've discussed on many points that um, crypto is a borderless at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have uh, certain restrictions that you have within the kind of fiat world um, in terms of uh, actual digital payments in the yeah. fiat world. Uh, so I think it makes things like this a lot more um, easier for these individuals to do and it's to spread like wildfire yeah. across the globe, which then causes a lot of issues for authorities trying to actually shut down or stop or, mm-hmm. or try and kind of prevent certain things from happening. Yeah. And now let's look into the purpose of some of these completely anonymous coins Mm -hmm. you have something like tor yeah where silk road was created Mm -hmm. and what that is is a completely decentralized marketplace where they can't where they can't actually track you down Mm -hmm. Um, now how do you receive value for the goods that you want to sell like really and truly who are these anonymous coins really really for because if I'm just making normal purchases, I don't care whether people can see it or not. Only time you'd really care if people can see your transactions is if you're doing something that you just literally shouldn't be doing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's the purpose of some of these anonymous coins. It is so that they can supply and enable those people that are selling those particular items or services to receive value. Mm-hmm. And Personally, that is why I believe SegWit was actually integrated in because it completely removes the signatures to outside into a completely different space. Then if you have the introduction of the Lightning Network, something that we spoke about on one of our previous episodes, Mm -hmm. it allows that layer of fog. Now I'm in a situation where I have the marketplace and I also have the ability of receiving value. Mm -hmm. Now, Bitcoin is the complete, complete opposite. And if we look at one of the more recent events that have happened. Now, on September the 10th, the Portuguese police and Europol announced that they had broken up one of the largest counterfeiting operations that they've ever seen. According to a report, they seized uh, $77,000 as well as discovering as much as $1.4 million um, that may have been created and already distributed. Mm -hmm. So... These people, the reason why this actually applies to the previous thing, previous things that we were talking about mm. is because they were potentially using Bitcoin to actually receive value and send outside of their jurisdiction into other countries, etc. Uh-huh. So they were using yep. that as effectively a way of moving money. Now, that is the worst way of doing it because on Bitcoin, even though that things have now slightly changed, it is still pretty much a time chain where you can track things back and you can hold people accountable for their actions. Yeah. So all of this thing that the crypto community space has been talking about for a long time, and they think that all of these transactions that they've done in the past um, can't be tracked back. Everything there is there forever mm-hmm. on the true version of Bitcoin. So if you're doing transactions 10 years ago, they can hold you accountable still for them. Yep. So we're now starting to see the breakdown of these organizations just from us having a complete time chain, as opposed to us going the complete other route, which is anonymous coins. And then all you're doing is fueling those market spaces and supporting their causes. And just to add further clarity to that mm. as well, you've got a situation where, yes, of course, now the on and off ramps pretty much across the globe now becoming, um, you know, AML KYC applicable. Mm. Um, so people are actually having to prove who they are. Now, people that, like you said, think that, because they were before that stage, because they went on, for example, um, what's the name of the the coin site where you can trade quite easily um, with different individuals and you can meet up and you can do that? What's the name of that? Oh, well, local Bitcoins. Local Bitcoins, yeah. right? So people before felt that because they were using local Bitcoins, they were turning up with their cash and passing it over to someone else, that they're totally safe in these things, right? And they were the mechanisms that they were using to try and avoid those on and off ramps when they started to come in place. Yeah. Because this has been like a tiered system in, in, in a way, right? We had first, you know, cup lunch, everything was easy. You know, people did what they want. Then it went to the kind of second layer where, you know, we could see that AML and KYC was starting to be done by quite a few companies. And now pretty much it's industry standard across the board where people are gaining that information. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it doesn't mean that these people are not going to be held accountable for the things that they've done, um, you know, within uh, certain scenarios like like localbitcoins.com and things like that. So I think it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Um, And 
I know we're cutting it a little bit short, but I think we should call it there. Yeah, no, that's fine with me, mate. That's fine with me. So as always, guys, we always appreciate you watching our episodes. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you are enjoying what you are seeing and also comment as well. We've got some fantastic content which is coming out from Bitstocks TV as well as the blog content that we've got on our website. So please check out everything that's going on with us at this moment in time. So thanks as always, guys. See you soon. Peace and love. <laughs>